Coming up on Mountain News this morning, October 22nd has a new meeting for the City of London and Breast Cancer Awareness. Plus, a Somerset program is offering students the chance to get ahead and look for careers that don't involve going to college. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, just before six o'clock here on this Monday morning, I am Brandon Robinson and we're giving you a little news, a little weather. It is Monday, October 23rd, and we appreciate you starting your chilly Monday morning with us. Let's head down to I-75 at Mount Vernon, and you see not a whole lot of traffic down that way this morning, a little bit, but it's not as foggy as it was in some places a little earlier, but it's definitely cold. We are in the 30s pretty much everywhere with three, I'd say four exceptions. Moorhead, Harlan, and Jackson, all at 43. Of course, Monticello's at 46 on this sensor. And 40, just hanging on there in Middlesbrough this morning. Everybody else is in the 30s. 32 Jonesville, 33 Clintwood and Irvin, 34 chilly degrees right here in Hazard at the airport. As we take a look at today's breakdown, about 69, mainly sunny skies, maybe a few clouds out there, and of course, no rain as we head deeper into that forecast, and we'll continue to keep you updated on that as we go along. All right, we have a developing story that we've been following overnight from Louisa. State troopers were called to conduct a welfare check for 61-year-old William Hickman around 8.30 last night. This was off of uh, Kentucky 2033 off of Highway 65. As state troopers approached that scene, they say they were fired on upon by Hickman. Officials then set up a rumor around the building he was in, resulting in a standoff that lasted several hours. A special response team was called out to help calm him down, but eventually officials had to use tear gas to bring him out. The standoff ended about 4.30 this morning. There were no injuries. Charges have not been released yet, and we've been told he's been taken to the Big Sandy Detention Center over in Paintsville. We also have an update for you regarding a golden alert involving an Estill County man. Kentucky State Police were searching for 69-year-old Eugene French Jr. this weekend. He had been missing since Friday evening. Police say just before 4.30 Saturday afternoon, a family member found French unresponsive on an ATV path where he was last seen on Bicknell Branch Road. He was pronounced dead by the Estill County Coroner's Office. Officials say no foul play is suspected, but the incident continues to be under an investigation. In Harlan County, the Coroner's Office there is also investigating a death. Around 8.30 p.m. Saturday night, a man's body was found at a motel on Skidmore Drive in Harlan. The Harlan County coroner pronounced the man dead at the scene. His name is not being released at this time as officials wait for all of his family to be notified, but we do know he was 48 years old. We are told that foul play is not suspected in that case either, but that's also an ongoing investigation. With the end of Breast Cancer Awareness Month nearing the city of London's Mayor Randall Weddle, made a proclamation making October 22nd National Breast Cancer Awareness Day in the city of London. The announcement came during the inaugural dash for a cure. WIMT's Jack Demler has more from the new fundraising event. The sound that sent over 300 people running to raise money for an illness that impacts thousands of women in Kentucky a year. Don Taylor and Angela Murray organized the first ever Dash for a Cure hosted at the London Laurel Farmers Market to honor those impacted by the disease. We decided that it would be a good idea if we did something to honor those that have fought the fight, remember those who lost the battle, and to support those that are currently fighting. Taylor says a big reason for creating the event is to support a community that supported her during her battle with breast cancer. Going through that, I had so much love and support from family and friends who helped me to get well and to go through that journey. And the prayers and the just people being there for me and helping me go to my appointments. And that's why I wanted to give back because so many people were good to me. And paying special tribute to two women who died of breast cancer earlier this year. They are the reason that we decided to uh, put on this event, was to honor Carlisle Keith Young as well as Missy Bray. After setting a goal of 200 people, Taylor and Murray were shocked at the turnout. It's incredible. I'm overjoyed. I am overwhelmed that so many people showed up. 
showed up to participate and be a part of this. I mean, we have just been speechless with the amount of uh, support behind our community. I mean, it's just, it's phenomenal. And we greatly appreciate all of, of, all of our participants and all of our uh, sponsors. We couldn't have put this on without our sponsors. Support that includes a proclamation naming October 22nd Breast Cancer Awareness Day in London and raising over $40,000 for the Baptist Health Carlisle Keith Young Cancer Fund. In London, Jack Demler, WIMT Mountain News. Murray says they can plan to continue to host the Dash for the uh, Cure event annually to help bring in, or, and hope to bring in more participants. Community members in Prestonsburg gathered at the Middle Creek Battlefield to honor the service of one of their own on Saturday. The Big Sandy, a chapter of the Sons of the American Revolution, hosted a memorial service honoring Lieutenant John Fitzpatrick, who served during the Revolutionary War. The president of the chapter, Edward Keaton, says they try to honor all the patriots who served in that war, but for patriots or for the patriots to have ties to their members in their organization is extra special. When we have a patriot who happens to be the grandfather, fifth great grandfather of some of our members, it's extra special because really we're doing the honoring of our own. Keaton says he hopes to continue to pay tribute to those who have served. Meanwhile, the mental health of our nation's current veterans was the focus of an event near Louisville this weekend. The second annual veteran suicide prevention concert took place in Germantown on Saturday. Twelve different bands and artists took the stage, many of which are veterans themselves. All of them performed in an effort to show that all service members are supported every moment of every day. But we're here to support sometimes silently, but this is definitely, we're bringing a lot of the community together that being artists and bands, just to uh, show that people out there really do support. All proceeds from the concert are going to Dogs Helping Heroes, a group that help, works to provide service animals to veterans in need. Following high school graduation, the norm might be going to college and getting a four-year degree, but WIMT's RJ Johnson has more on a Somerset program for some students that might not want to or want to or need to go to college. The Bus to Biz program is providing students with more opportunities for the workforce after graduating high school. However, the way students are being educated on these opportunities might be a little different. And we thought, what better opportunity would we have to reach the true masses if we inform the teachers, the educators, and the guidance counselors of what great wage earning opportunities, employment opportunities are out there for the students they, that they interact with on a daily basis. SPEDA President and CEO Chris Girdler says it's important to have educators provide the information because of the connections they have with students. A lot of the times the biggest influence on our lives or one of the biggest influences on our lives was a teacher or a coach or something along those lines. And so we want to make sure that that teacher, that coach, that guidance counselor, that they are completely aware of the opportunities that every community has to offer. Somerset High School Math and Statistics instructor Forrest Spillman says the program helps bring different perspectives into the classroom. Helping kind of bridge the gap between my own respective school and the business community on what we as educators need to do to equip students to be uh, more successful after they graduate if they're heading straight to the workforce. He says even some of the other educators are loving the program. In fact, I've even heard uh, colleagues even say, wow, I almost would like to work here after I retire or or you know, maybe even now, you know, it, it's just kind of encouraging to see that there's, there's just a lot of opportunities out there for our graduates. Which is ultimately the goal, providing more resources to students. In Somerset, RJ Johnson, WYMT Mountain News. Spillman says the program is in its second year and the success they are seeing is great. He adds that they hope other school districts across the region can create similar programs. Switching gears, it is known as one of the most haunted cemeteries in Kentucky. The Grapevine Cemetery near Madisonville is drawing attention from paranormal investigators from across the United States. Visitors of the cemetery report hearing crying sounds and seeing statues move late at night. Whether you believe in ghosts or not, some people swear by their belief in the paranormal. Brandon Ellis is the founder of Proof After Paranormal. He says there could be some big differences in the hauntings he's encountered. 
There's several different levels of hauntings, and it'll start from residual on up. Intelligent spirits, they can communicate with you by responding to your answers directly. Residual, they don't know you exist. They're kind of just doing their own thing in their spiritual world. Ellis says paranormal investigators like him look at the big picture, including the history and not just the haunted aspects of the places they investigate. All right, we head back to Jenkins this morning, US 119, US 23. A little patchy fog over there, but not too bad otherwise. No traffic this morning, but chilly. We are looking at temperatures continuing to drop. Middlesbrough somehow hanging on to that 40 degree reading, at least for the moment there. I think they'll be in the 30s before it's all over. Monticello, the warm spot at 46. Moorhead, Jackson, and Harlan down to 43 at this point. So again, lots of 30s out there. Jones with a cold spot right at freezing this morning in sheltered valleys. So as we head through your day planner, you're going to see lots of sunshine today. Maybe just a few clouds in the mix. Temperatures top out right there in the upper 60s, close to 70 by around 5 o'clock this afternoon. 610 your time. Thanks for joining Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. Coming up, the president pushes for more aid to Gaza while tensions climb with Israel. Israel's northern neighbor, Hezbollah.